going on, everybody? This is Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast in the studio today with Jonathan Mack. What's going on, bud? What up? What up? We got something a little different we're going to try today. Uh, Jonathan is going to pull some questions and throw them at me, and we're just going to talk about stuff, like, in the news. We'll come up with a fun title for it at some point. Yeah. If it hits. You know, if it's if it's a bust, eh, we won't ever do it again. Yeah, I think it'll be good to cover some topics in the business entrepreneurship kind of lane. Uh because I'm sure other people are interested in them as well, coming yeah. across their news feed and such. Maybe they're seeing it. So we're just gonna jump right in and uh see where Jonathan takes us. So Jonathan, what's up? So I think the biggest thing that's been going <clears throat> on in the news, just popping across everyone's news feed, has been the Astro World tragedy. Oh yeah. So I feel like before we cover it, we should just give our condolences to everybody. Because regardless of opinions, it's still just a sad situation. Well, yeah, you know? I mean, are they up to, is it like nine? I think nine deaths? Nine or ten yeah. men. And then there's still a lot of people in the hospital, a couple dozen people in the hospital. Um, that is wild. Like, I was thinking about that, and you're like, okay, so that was in Houston, yep. right? And they've been doing this show for, this might be like the fourth year I think it's Travis third, has done it. Third. Okay. So, yeah, it was 2018 Yeah, when he did it. They, they didn't do it last year, I imagine, because of COVID. So, nope. okay, yeah. So this might actually only be, let's see, 18, 19. So this would be in the third, yeah. Yep. Lot. So, so apparently, like, the venue can hold, like, 200,000 people. Yeah. Maybe even more. And the city limited it to 50. So from a capacity standpoint, everybody's got to be feeling – you know, really good about this. Yeah. Like going into it, you would think that we're straight. Yeah. Capacity is 200 K. We're at 50, 150,000 buffer. But then you start thinking about, well, you know, how did they have it set up? What was going on? Um, are they, I mean, I think about, I've never been to like a big music festival like that, but, um, in my less fat days, I would do you know, some, some, some races and they always corral you. I always joke. I'm like, oh, here we go. They're going to pull out the cattle prods. Yeah. And they're putting you into like these areas where that's where you have to wait for your group to be up to start the race. And I hate it. I really, really hate it. Cause I'm kind of a, like when I go to a restaurant, my back has to be facing a certain way. I always want to see the entryways. I need to see the exit. I don't like being blocked in. I'm never the dude who slides into the booth. I'm never the guy who's going to go sit in the corner. Um, now, I mean, I will sit in the corner if I got ease of access, but you will never catch me blocked in. I just, I don't like the feeling. Um, if I'm at like amusement parks, whatever, I've always got to be on the outskirts and have an idea of how I get out of here. If something goes sideways. Yeah, for sure. Cause I don't want to be the dude on the news. Who's like, you know, shoving old ladies out of the way yeah, and just stuff like that. Create some space because in the moment, <laughs> I'm shoving her. Yeah, the uh, football comes out. Yeah, of you it's I've got to get out of the group. So, you know, it, I don't know how the setup was. I my I imagine the setup would be, you know, um, barriers. You know, mm -hmm. you probably got different. You probably have like your general admission tickets. You probably have like VIP spots. You probably have like special guests. You have all these things, but you get all these people like that together, and particularly at a show, and energy's going bonkers. And it's a momentum thing. It doesn't take 50,000 people making a bad decision for that to happen. Yeah. You can talk about out of 50,000 people, a couple hundred moving. And that's going to start this shift where everybody starts pressing. And what it seemed like to me with the deal was everybody started moving towards the stage when Travis came out. Like, it's just like a flood. Yep. And now we're all going against this wall right here and everybody's coming. And now what maybe would have held 50,000 people, or let's say it was 10,000 people in that, that space condensed. You got all this room on the back end that nobody's paying attention to because everybody's working towards what? Yeah. They're trying you know, to get up to that front barrier the stage. The, the part that messed up was kind of messed up to me though, was there were concerns supposedly suppose whether there was it was brought about or not or just after the fact people talking about it during the shows leading up to travis coming out there were already some concerns there was already a lot of pressure pushing 
move yeah. it up to the front. You know what I mean? I mean, when people got into the venue, it was a stampede. So those yeah. those are the two main talking points, the two questions that people have, which is what could have prevented the stampede in the beginning? And news has come out that whichever securities company or whichever yeah. uh, booking event agency hired the security, they hired them via text with no ID and paid them via cash app is what is being I mean that's how most your real like you know high end you know legitimate security companies would get paid probably yeah when i was working for uva football every security guy on the field was paid via cash app yeah i'm sure i'm sure <laughs> it's just i got a, a funny story to tell situation. you about that too we were talking about security at uva football uh we'll talk about that in a little bit yeah um it yeah so that plays into it, but but here's the deal: if it's a if it's a general admission area, mm-hmm. right? There's no seating; it's just a parking lot or it's a field or whatever it may be. And you open those gates, no one's shocked by what's about to happen. Yeah, exactly. You have one tiny security checkpoint, and then a You're mass in. of thousands of people, and everybody's what I want to be in the front. And they just gave a bunch of dudes from downtown Houston security vests and expecting them to like, there's videos of guys just like, I guess I need this money. Like I got to fight thousands of people. And how's that going to go? Only one way. Exactly. So they open up for the pre-shows. It's stampedes. It's a hot mess. That has to happen every venue. Like I can't see how that doesn't happen when you have that type of numbers and you're just doing a general admission you know, type deal. Um, I feel like enough of these things take place where we could probably make some better decisions oh, and come up sure. with, with a, a better way. I mean, there's other artists who hold their own festivals. Biggest example on sure. like a size kind of comparison scale wise would yeah. be uh, Tyler, the creator and what he does with mm-hmm. camp Flognaw, quote unquote, it's like a big carnival. Same okay. thing as Astro world really, but we haven't seen any deaths there. So that's the, yeah. Next thing that is really interesting is people are trying to blame Travis for not stopping or doing anything. And as somebody who frequents being on stage, someone who holds a microphone often, it's really frustrating to hear opinions from people who have never really spoken in front of 15, 20 people, let alone held a microphone in front of thousands. Right. So people are trying to say, like, he could hear them. He could he could nothing. see them scream it like. I, I need to stress this when you're on stage and you are performing, you have not only, especially at that level, you have an earpiece in right. so that you can hear how you sound to you. Right. You also have stage monitors, which are big, probably larger than the speakers we have in here, like oh, 25 sure. yeah, to yeah, 40 yeah. inch Huge. speakers meant so that the DJ and everyone on stage can hear how you sound. And right. then you have speakers projected outwards. Yeah. For everyone you're else. in the mix of it from yeah. a sound standpoint. No, you can't hear anything. And, to think that you can see something. Now there was apparently a moment where he was like, Hey, he did see something like somebody up in the front, like fell or something. Yeah. And he's, he's like, Hey security, can we help them out? But mm-hmm. as far as in the midst of 50,000 people and people collapsing, people passing out, because think about how you get overheated, how tough it must be to breathe in that situation. Um, they were talking about, they can't move their arms. They couldn't do anything. Um, I mean, that's horrifying, first of all. Oh, yeah. And But to think that, well, one, to think that he should have stopped it, no way dude could have known that was happening. Um, he just sees a wave of people, majority of which are fine. Yeah. Majority of which are dancing, having a good time, doing whatever, singing, whatever. It looks normal. He's not hearing help, screams for help. No. He's not hearing, hey, somebody's passed out on the ground. And because there's reports of people that were trying to help people, but the reports of people are like, oh, there's just people on the ground. Everybody's just still partying and having a good time. And they're under the feet of all these people. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's pretty atrocious. Yeah. To put the blame at him, I don't know. I have I have a problem with. Because also, too, it's his festival. He's got his name on it. And there is responsibility. Mm -hmm. there's accountability but he ain't the one hiring the security and he's not the one running the event he's not the one running the event he's not the one handling all the logistics he's not the one saying okay we're gonna put you know this this section of people together over here we'll put this section of people over here this is how many people we can put in this square footage 
He ain't worried about that. Exactly. So this leads into the next uh, kind of big talking point is that it has come out since that Travis did not have the authority to stop the show. So the only two people who could have stopped the show were the event planner and like the fe- like the overseer of the entire festival. Yeah. So there's that. And then on well, top and of the, that. And probably the local authorities, fire yeah. chief, police, whatever. Imagine if he had stopped it. You have a venue of up to 50,000 people, <laughs> yeah. most of whom are not where this stampede is going on. Right, so yeah. you have a lot. If he stops it, you have a lot of confused people all looking down like, OK, what's going on? Yep. And then everyone in the middle who, like you said, it could only just be a few hundred people. Right. If they're freaking out, it just creates mass panic. Yeah. And I think the one area in which Travis really is culpable is the fact that as a fan of his, I've acknowledged that he is one to in incite the rage oh he sure yeah, to yeah. Call it. he's like yeah, yeah. quote unquote he calls his fans ragers yeah um so i think in his words and some of his actions and of course the music he's definitely presented himself as someone yeah. who supports that but i still don't think that he's like incredibly liable for it no but it can be like okay supports it I think everybody can agree he doesn't support 14-year-olds dying at his music festival, right? Exactly. Like, that is the energy, that is the tone, that is the um, the vibe, that is music, his lyrics, um, his engagement with the fans and the crowds, and the type of things that, that he wants to give off is that high energy. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this this isn't the first time that something like this has happened either. And honestly, I don't care what type of venue it is, the reason for the for the event. You put yourself in situations with mass groups of people like that. There is an inherent risk that you are agreeing to as a human being. Yep. I'm going to go to this concert. I'm going to put myself in the middle of tens of thousands of people. No, I'm not. I, I'll listen to it in the car and have just as good of a time. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's for me personally. Yeah. But then there's I, I have friends who they want to go to festival after festival after festival, and they just love it. They feed off it all different types of music. It doesn't matter. They love it. But at the same, and I think about that stuff, and I'm not a worry wart. I'm not. I don't run around in fear all the time, and I like, oh my god, I can't do this because I'm scared. No, I'm just thinking about again, like we talk on previous shows, like what's the cost. Right. Yeah. The risk doesn't even really concern me, but the cost of doing it, like if something did happen, yeah, the risk is there. We acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. But if something bad did go down, what control do I have? And I don't run around in fear, but I do enjoy control. Yeah. And I mean, as someone with younger kids, the youngest confirmed victim, I believe they've said is 10 years old. Is that 10 now? 14 was what I thought I saw. Yeah. So that's wild. I just it's super unfortunate. I think that it's um, not right. Oh, no, not right. I, I think people will come at him on this stuff is 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 a, is a little silly. Um, you know, it, it's putting a lot of responsibility and blame on someone who's really not involved in that mm-hmm. that part of it. And the people who are putting it on, they know the type of energy that's going to come out into that crowd, and they were seeing it for hours earlier in the day. So really, if a call was going to be made to end this, cancel it, whatever, that should have been made earlier on. And I think one of the comments I read was talking about, it's like, well, there was concern over rioting because of the young age of the group. Like, huh? They're going to, because the young age group, they're going to riot if we cancel the show. Yeah. I mean... I mean, I would Maybe. be concerned if I only had 30 people up against an army of like thousands of 14, 15 year olds. But if you have adequate security and adequate barriers, that's not really a concern because right. there's no room to riot. So my ultimate question for you is in how this relates to business is what do you think about the nature of cutting corners and the risks associated with it um, as it pertains to dealing with something as yeah. important as human lives, you know, like concert planners are dealing with a large amount of human lives in a venue at one time. Yeah. You deal with a lot of dogs sometimes in an area at one time. Yeah. I think that anytime, whether it's business or in life, you're cutting corners and stuff. Uh, 
you know, whether it's diet, whether it's exercise routine, whether it's your job, um, the littlest of things, the biggest of things. Most of the time, it's whatever. Most of the time, it'll be whatever. No one would know. You know. You know. But most of the time, nobody else would really know. Um, had everything gone off great? Nobody would have known that they saved tens of thousands of dollars on security detail. Nobody would ever known. No big deal. The problem is when you make a habit of cutting corners. Yep. Um, eventually, it will get you. It will bite you in the ass. And, um, you know, it. <laughs> we see it in business all the time. You don't do something well. But it's good enough. People are like, ah, it's just whatever. It's done. I paid for the service. I'll move on. I won't worry about it. And you're like, well, they didn't worry about it. Maybe the next person won't either. Now, all of a sudden, someone decides, "Mm -mm, I'm not pleased with this service. I'm going to vocalize it. I'm going to leave a review. I'm going to do a post on social media, something about my experience. Now, all these people that you cut corners on who had the similar crappy experience this person has now brought public. Now, all of a sudden, they're like, you know what? I am going to say something, too. I had that same experience. My my car was worked on that same way. My dog was treated this same way. My kid was verbally abused, you know, at this, you know, after-school care program. My Whatever, what it doesn't matter. But now all these things come back. Now you're done. Because you made a habit of cutting the corners, right? And so it, it may not happen at first but it will always come to light. Yep. And and that's why you can't do I mean, you can do it, but be okay with the ramifications of cutting the corners. Exactly. And, and don't seem- preach that it's, it, 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 you're focused on excellence. You're focused on doing the right things. If your history says you're going to cut corners to either shave costs, to have less responsibility, to make it easier, don't don't put yourself in higher regard because it will it always comes around. Yep. And I think that it's going to be a while until we really see the full extent of the fallout from this situation because who knows, maybe the scope of festivals for the foreseeable future has been changed because we don't know if they'll even allow this many people in a venue because of uh, I don't know if that'll happen. And you here's why. So? I don't think so at all. I mean they'll have a festival next weekend. Because here's 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 the reality. This is super unfortunate, and it's really sad. And my heart hurts for, like, the families, for all of them, especially, though, like these young kids, just music fans who want to go out. I don't know why I would have a 10-year-old at the concert. Yeah, I would assume his parents probably not knowing, you know, hopefully. Yeah. I I would hope. I would hope. I would hope hope it's not a lack of But who knows? But the reality is um, that there will be festivals that are huge like this. And will they look at things and be like, Hey, hopefully will we look at things and, and, and um, readdress crowd control and, and protocols? Maybe, but this isn't the first time this has happened. Second money won't let it not happen. Very true. The power is the B. Yeah. And the power that the B is the, the green yeah. the cash and the cash won't allow for this type of event not to happen. It, it makes too much sense because if it didn't, they wouldn't do it. This is true. Right. And so the, the thing that really sucks is particularly when you get into circumstances where people are cutting corners, like this happened and this is terrible. I don't know how much they'll really care at the end of the day, Jonathan. It's very true. I mean, that, it, that's messed up and I don't know these people personally, so I don't, I, <laughs> That's kind of a messed up thing to say. Yeah, but we can judge based off of actions, you know, like right. If they're turn, if they're coming out and there's like, oh my gosh, this is where we messed up. This is what we're doing for the families. This is how we're going to manage this moving forward. All those things, things happen. And, but if it's just kind of swept under, yeah, that's bad news. I also think it's important for them to, if they're really like remorseful and want to do things better, they need to do things like above board like 100%. completely on the table and not do anything underhanded because 
for anyone that doesn't know, if you receive a refund for anything like this, if you receive like yeah. psychological treatment from them, any sort of help that they offer in the aftermath, you lose your right to sue. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Most people don't know that. So the powers that be did not get what they wanted in a particular instance in Richmond. They are not going to be adding the proposed casino. Oh uh, yeah. Was this urban one? Is yes. that who, what, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So what was really interesting to me about that was, so the state said five cities can vote on whether they want a casino or not. Mm-hmm. And they approved it. They're like, Hey, we're cool with the casino moving forward. Five cities. I can't remember. I think it was like Norfolk, Danville, Richmond. Yeah. Um, two others. I can't think off the top of my head. All four or four of the five passed the vote except for Richmond. Yeah. Everybody else voted last year though. I think in 2020 and they approved bringing a casino to their area, um, which most of which I think are already under construction. At least site work has started. Yeah. And moving forward. So Richmond had their vote last week and it was a no-go. It was close. It was like a thousand votes. Yeah, it was really, really close. Um, the thing that was interesting to me is, one, it was that close. I would have thought it would have been a little bit larger, and I would have thought it would have been in the favor of the casino. Oh, for sure. So super surprised about it. But, you know, the, the, the city said, people will decide. Yeah, from what I'm reading, it's a lot of the residents of the south side where the casino would go. They're basically saying like, hey, it could lead to an increase in crime, which who's to say? But then it all they're also saying, hey, this is really only going to benefit, you know, the powers that be. It's not going to help any of the actual people in that area. Well, but so here's the thing, though. The south side voted for mm. the the the. the the northern part of the of the James River, so your wealthier areas, like the your, fan wi- district. your your wider areas of Richmond, were opposed. They were the majority of the no's. That incenses me. Well, so the South Side was the yeas. Mm. All right, um, and particularly like because the argument in the past for like the casinos and stuff has been like where it was going to be in Richmond. Yeah. But this one was pr- proposed, I think it was like in Henrico County maybe. And, you know, it was in a more industrial area, lower income area, um, potentially bring a lot of revenue hopefully, to the city. Hopefully jobs. A ton of jobs. It was thousands of jobs. They were talking about multiple billions of dollars of revenue, you know, brought in over the first like 10 years. The crazy thing. I, I was really surprised. A little disappointed because I'd rather go to Richmond and gamble than deal with the tunnel going to Norfolk. Oh, for sure. And I mean, I'm disappointed just because I'm a degenerate gambler. <laughs> it's really, I'm not a degenerate, uh, but I, I like to gamble. Um, so it could have been cool. And they, they were partnering up with uh, what was colonial downs. I don't know what it's called now. Um, they just reopened underneath something like Lucky's or, or something. Uh, yeah. Nature. I know which one you're talking about, but yeah, I was surprised by it. I was really surprised by it. Uh, disappointed. I don't know, care enough to be disappointed, but I was surprised at how the um, the voting broke down and how close it was. I thought that would have been a, a yes vote for sure. Yeah, I'm really upset. I wanted to lose my life savings on the ponies. <laughs> well, you can still do that. You I, just find yourself a spot. And you go watch them on TV. Yeah, but closer to home, you know. Well, it'd be there. So what did you think about the Notre Dame-Virginia game? You just got back from that? Yeah, we had a great time. We went up Saturday. Um, so we're UVA season ticket holders. We enjoy UVA football. Love Charlottesville, as you know. But I'm a lifelong Notre Dame fan. So every couple of years. Why? Why? Um, the story I tell is that my father was a USC fan, Southern California. Mm-hmm. For us out here on the East Coast and the South, we just think of the Gamecocks down in South Carolina. That is not the case. No, the real USC, exactly uh, Southern Cal, and so I just remember as a little kid, and I think it was honestly a mascot-based decision. As a little kid, I thought the leprechaun was way cooler than like the Trojan warrior. Yeah, I get it. It's kind of dumb, surprising but, decision. But, uh, very. But for a kid, you're like, oh, it's a leprechaun. He was on the cereal box. It's what's up. <laughs> so I just, I did as a kid. I just became a fan, and always followed along and 
just stuck with me. So, so running it's one of my greatest disappointments. Run, running into battle, you would rather see a dude in a top hat and knee high socks, and not a dude <laughs> on a horse, you know, with a with a spear. <laughs> I mean, as an adult, no, I think the Trojans way cooler. Um, but shit, yeah, I maybe. I mean, if you're going to the battle, you're gonna need some luck. Yeah, I mean, the dude on the horse didn't win in this altercation because UVA got smoked. Yeah, so it was a good time. Um, I did not realize. I've been busy, man. I haven't been paying attention to, like, sports news and stuff. I didn't realize Brendan Armstrong was out injured with, like, a rib injury. Yep. So, you know, he he's – I think he still is. He may not be. But he was, a week or two ago, leading the nation in, in passing yards. He honestly might be. I, it was big numbers. And so I, I knew – that it would be a fun game to watch because they're going to put up their their points regardless. And, you know, Notre Dame started out really rough this year, a lot of injuries on the offensive line, young players, and we had no rushing game whatsoever. But, you know, we were coming off three weeks in a row, 200 yards plus rushing. So I was like, man, this is going to be, uh, we're, we're vibing. It's, Notre Dame's going to win handedly, but it would be an enjoyable game to watch. Yeah. It was not. not um, it was cold as hell. It was really cold, and I we had gone to a brewery earlier in the day, and I got cold there, and, like, I could never get warm again. What people don't understand about Charlottesville cold, specifically that mountain cold, mm-hmm. is that UVA's football stadium is literally, like, in the side of a hill. Yep. Like, it's in the ground. Like, it looks like it's just kind of positioned on the side of this hill. Yeah. So when the wind blows, it's just blowing through just a valley of – Mountains, yeah, but the and it gets to you. The stadium though is the warmest part of the day. That's the crazy thing. You could see the the flags blowing at the top. Mm-hmm. We weren't feeling any wind where we were at in oh, the yeah, stadium. But you got the good seats. You're I not mean, sitting on the metal bleachers. Now they had to put the cushion down for us on ours. So, we, um, but that it was fun. I mean, it was nice. But we tailgated. I mean, the game was until seven thirty, mm-hmm. and so night game under the lights. I was hype. I was really excited. Like we're walking to the game. I'm getting hype. I'm screaming. I'm just really excited. I'm ready to go. Bands playing, you know, cheerleaders doing their deals. You're walking down to the stadium. But we get there. Game started a little slow. Notre Dame started popping off. I'm like, all right, this is cool. About halfway through the third quarter, I'm looking at my family. We had some friends with us, and I'm cold. And I never get cold. And I was like, if we wanted to bounce, y'all want to go? If I was ready to go, they're like, oh, yeah, we're cold. Yeah. So we left. We go back to where we tailgate and we get in the van, cut on the TV. So we're watching the game that we just left. So that was a cool experience. The, my guy driving, though, made the wrong turn out of the parking lot. He brought us back by the stadium. Bad move. Man, we could have been on the highway rolling yeah. back to Hampton Roads. No, we got hemmed up by the stadium. Yeah. So it was really weird. We're in the van watching the TVs. Looking out the window, watching the game on the field. Yeah, oh, we I were know going exactly past the student you section, right? You were right in front of my first year dorm. Oh, yeah, all the dorms are over there and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, it was a great experience. I love, um, I love coming out to to UVA football games. I will tell you though, I will tell you, and people probably shit over this statement, but I don't really care. And I left in the third quarter, so it's whatever. But. UVA fans are so weak. Oh, man. Ooh, like, ooh, you want to get on this subject? So we can. Like, I'm not a Virginia Tech fan, but I am a fan of the Virginia Tech experience. Oh, for I'm sure. I'm a fan of how they come out on the field. Enter, and they've created this, Sandman, this and everyone's culture, jumping. right? Mm-hmm. It, it's insane. I am a fan of that. Virginia Tech itself, trash. Sorry. You know, it, it just drives me nuts. But, but. It's the second possession, all right? Notre Dame's got the ball. It's their second possession. It's third and two. It's 0-0 ball game. And UVA fans, they're done. They're already like... Dead silent. It's dead silent. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, they're right in front of us. Mm -hmm. What happens? Touchdown, right in our face. Yep. Right in our face. And I got hyped because I'm there for Notre Dame that day. And it happened right, right in front of us. Big old tight end, eighty-seven. I think it's Myers. He comes around. Dude's a beast. He'll be in. He'll be in the league, it, right in front of us. And there was nothing. Notre Dame fans owned that stadium. 
Oh, I mean, it happens every single game because here's the, here's the thing with Halftime, UVA. Exodus. 90, 90% of their fans are either former students and or boosters. Again, former students. It's people who pay money to be there. Yeah. And if they're paying money to be there and the team isn't winning, no energy, no sort of, and no, no will to help the team win. No. And they don't understand. It's like, hey, maybe even a simple, you know, wave. Like little no. crowd chant could help the team. Like they don't understand situational football either. It's like no. third and third and two. Yeah, maybe yell a little bit. Make and it the poor guy the in like the the not the media stand, but production or whatever they call it. They're like make some noise. They try to get the stuff going. They try to get some music going. <laughs> and you know Betty and and Michael who graduated in fifty seven. You know who are there. Yeah, exactly. It, it was it was not. Now there were a lot of people. You know, it's a big game. It's Notre Dame. So for UVA, they had a lot of people out there. The Tech game will be packed. But here's my problem with it. And we'll be there at the Tech game. It'll be dominated by Tech people. Oh, for sure. But, I mean, I don't blame that because the Tech fans crawl out of their caves or wherever they're from, the middle of Virginia, <laughs> Christiansburg. I don't even want to talk about it. Just ugh. But it was it was frustrating. We had a really good time. Yeah. Um, UVA football um, is getting better. Yeah, Brennan you know, is fourth in the country in passing it, yards. Okay, all right. So the dude's this solid. Being out two weeks. They've got some athletes, you know, out there. Um, they're tied in, number zero, man. Woods. Yeah. <sighs> That's a grown man on the field. It helps when you stop going by, like, the good old boy, like, we're going to do things by the rule book mentality and recruit a dude who, uh, you know, is sure. an athlete. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's great when we can recruit guys who are like three stars with a hard work ethic, great academics, right. but it's like, yeah, we're getting blown out by tech at the end of the year. We don't want this to keep happening. Right. No, but it was a good time. I and mean, we always have a good time. Tailgating was cool. It was the first time being able to roll up there with the van mm-hmm. and tailgate with the van. And how and were the sales? Great. Yeah. Fun. The sales. Yeah. Did y'all do that this weekend? The. Oh, no, 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 no. Black Friday. That's Thanksgiving. Black Fr- okay. That's, yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's next Thanksgiving. weekend or two weekends out. So no, we had a good time. Um, yeah, I mean, this is only the second time I've been able you know, to see Notre Dame play like in person. Really? Have so you ever I'm, been to their stadium? Never been to the stadium. What? How have I yeah. been to their stadium and you haven't been to the stadium? I mean, well, well it's your job. That's that's true. But I will I tell was you, doing my job, so I haven't been able to go. <laughs> Notre Dame is a different type of intimidation because it's like a, a vaguely religious intimidation when you're in their stadium because it's real <laughs> flat. And it, right. it goes out like the stadium kind of pushes outwards. It yeah. doesn't go up. So you can kind of see like the landscape around you. Right. And I believe it's in the northern end zone. Just a big old building with Jesus on the side. That's touchdown looking Jesus, down man. over the field. That's touchdown Jesus. That's yeah. why they put the big screen on the other side. You can't block touchdown Jesus. Yeah, it's not college football playoff Jesus, is it? No, it's not. It is not. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if they're in, though. I mean, they have to be in every year because the college football playoff doesn't really care watch about your tone. Like, watch your team. tone, Jonathan. They don't watch care. Watch your tone. They put themselves for an opportunity to have consideration. Yeah, because they beat matters. up on bad ACC teams. Come on, man. We play a handful. <laughs> we play a handful of ACC times. ACC teams. We have to. They play a good schedule. Their schedule ain't any different than anybody else's. Except for. Did y'all well, run from Clemson this year or did y'all see them? No, we ain't run from nobody. I wish we would have played Clemson this year. We'd wipe the floor with them, just like everybody else. Yeah, they're terrible. Y'all got the beginning of that last year when Trevor Lawrence got hurt. Oh, no, how mean, do you that, even say yeah. that, dude? DJ, I just say DJ ukulele. I can't say that last. Is that their quarterback now? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's wild. Um, but it was a good time. It's cool. We'll be back up for Tech uh, UVA, and Notre Dame's gonna win out. They're gonna pick up the four spot, and probably have to play Georgia, and hopefully that will be a repeat of like 2017, 2019. I would put at least but we one, get a win. I would put one paycheck on Georgia beating Notre Dame by at least 30 points. Oh, bro, I think that um Georgia's different this year. Georgia Georgia is very different this year. Yeah. But, you know, I like to think I mean, I'm not going to do that to you. I'd feel bad. But we can do a friendly wager. We'll talk about it. We'll see. Check in next time to see if I lose my money. <laughs> Not if you're betting on Georgia. You won't. Oh, that's for sure. What else you got for me? Uh, what type of music have you been listening to? That was really my last question. What has the month of November been like? And are you excited for the transition into Christmas music? <laughs> so what music am I listening to? Um, so I've been listening to a lot of Nas lately, which is funny. Nice. Um, 
a buddy of mine texted me a couple weeks ago. He goes, I haven't listened to one mic in like 15 years. It just feels so different now and not in a bad way. And um, that got me on this whole kick of listening to some Nas. Yeah. Tribe Called Quest, a lot of Tribe, nice, which is funny. And then Chris Stapleton, that's been kind of my mix. E eclectic <laughs> mix. I, I, it's kind of, I mean, I'll be driving down the road and I'll be on like XM or whatever. And I'll have like the fish station playing and Kiki gets in the car. She's like, what the heck is going on? What is this? Or like Grateful Dead. I listen to everything, but yeah, lately not bad. it's been Nas, Tribe, and a lot of Chris Stapleton. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big Nas guy. I have Illmatic and Street Dreams on my or on vinyl. Okay, wow, yeah, big fan of Nas. Um, and then Christmas music. Uh, yes, I love Christmas music, man. I really love Christmas music, and but I have a very hard set rule. There is no Christmas music until. Thanksgiving supper's done. Like that's that's my rule. Now, Kiki has creeped in a couple already this year that she's got me on. I'm like, dang, girl. But last year, well, when we started going away for Thanksgiving, Devin likes to come home to the house being decorated. So we usually didn't start decorating until Black Friday. That's when we would decorate. Now we've started last couple of years, we decorate before, like the weekend before Thanksgiving, so that when we come home from traveling. Uh, the house is set up. It's ready to roll. We'll still decorate the tree and stuff afterwards, but we'll have the house will have the feel. Fair enough. So we can be there. I really enjoy this time of year. It is it is my favorite time of the year. Yeah, I love Christmas. I love this season, but um, not really a fan of Mariah Carey, which is basically just Christmas music. So that's the one song I can't listen to. I hate it. I hate it. Devin loves that song. I think it's horrible. I can't it's do San trash. Santa baby. Are you kidding no, me? I'm I just... broke my back to get these presents and you, you doing that with Santa. Okay. Okay. I, okay. So two years ago, maybe three, it was two years ago. Katie introduced me to Christmas trap music. You ever heard this? You're looking at me just terribly right now. I'm looking at you like I'm about to go to have a conversation with Katie. What is Christmas trap music? Okay. No, I know what it is, but yeah. I know what trap music is. I I'm, know you know what trap music, but you haven't heard the Christmas trap music? I'm assuming it's just sleigh bells over trap beats. Listen. All right, this is what we're going to do. All of through Christmas, any episodes, we are mixing up our intro music and it's going to be Christmas trap music is how the podcast will start and end. Easy. All right, we got that. I'll give you some of my favorites. We'll share some with you. I got you. But I love it. It's funny. So um, Devin's getting ready. She'll do uh, um, like a turkey trot. You know, people will do like these little 5K races or whatever. Yeah. And so Devin a couple times has hosted them. So she's doing one this weekend since we're going to be gone. And I think it was two years ago, we were on the Gator with a huge stereo on top. And we're going around my neighborhood. It's like 8 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And we have... Um, Christmas trap music playing. I'm dressed like Santa. Logan's driving the Gator. We got the dogs in the back. I'm standing in the bed of the Gator dressed as Santa. Huge speaker just pumping. People are coming out of their house looking what's going on. We were waking everybody up. We were causing chaos. We were our own. We were a blessing to our neighborhood. We were the Macy's Day Parade in living color. Sounds a little bit like harassment, but I mean to each their own. I, I don't think anybody called the, sh the police. I highly recommend or highly recommend Gucci Mane's East Atlanta Santa series. He has a uh, send it to me. Yeah, he has a lot of trap music so. based around Christmas. <laughs> it's good, but yeah, man, that's what we're doing. It's it's all good. Um, we're excited for this for this time of year. I mean, it's it's cool. Yeah, it's a good time, guys. Um, I enjoyed answering Jonathan's questions, talking about some stuff going on. If you've got things that you'd like for us to talk about, shoot us an email. You know, the Big Dog Podcast at Josh Wilson Dog. You can. Hit me up on Instagram, you know, or on Facebook. Send us a message. Let us know what you want to hear. Let us know what you want input on. Things that you'd like to hear, you know, talked about. Yeah, we'll definitely, definitely send questions because yeah. I will just gear us towards football and music. Yeah, that so. works. I can talk about that. So no, we're good. Hope you all are well. Have a great week, and thanks for tuning in to the Big Dog Podcast. Yes. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows.